Welcome to ID the Future, a podcast of the Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture. I'm David Bowes, your host. What are the odds that our universe would be so finely tuned for life? How is it possible that every variable would be precisely right for our existence? Do these conditions exist somewhere else so that we might find life elsewhere? And do these very special traits of our universe suggest guidance by an intelligence? Harper's Magazine recently published a fascinating piece by MIT physicist Alan Lightman grappling with these questions and more. It was entitled, The Accidental Universe, Science's Crisis of Faith. The story details dramatic developments in cosmological findings that seek to explain the fine-tuning of the universe and avoid the uncomfortable questions they raise, primarily the uncomfortable notion that this fine-tuning for life may suggest an intelligent creator of the universe. The story relates how scientists have been grappling with the fundamental parameters of the universe, how if their values were a little larger or a little smaller, life could not have arisen. Lightman writes, If these fundamental parameters were much different from what they are, it is not only human beings who would not exist, no life of any kind would exist. One of the most fascinating and refreshing aspects of the article is its treatment of intelligent design. While the story relates how scientists are theorizing in order to avoid considering it, ID is actually treated respectfully, and there is no attempt at using political language, like anti-science or false generalizations, creationism, to discredit it. After describing the complexity of the parameters of the universe that have to be just right in order for hydrogen atoms to exist separate from helium, for the nuclear force to be just right for the complex atoms of biology to hold together, and for stars to be able to explode and spew out life-supporting chemical elements into space, Lightman delivers this stunner. The great question, of course, is why these fundamental parameters happen to lie within the range needed for life. Does the universe care about life? Intelligent design is one answer. Indeed, a fair number of theologians, philosophers, and even some scientists have used fine-tuning and the anthropic principle as evidence of the existence of God. For example, at the 2011 Christian Scholars Conference at Pepperdine University, Francis Collins, a leading geneticist and director of the National Institutes of Health, said, To get our universe, with all of its potential for complexities, or any kind of potential for any kind of life form. Everything has to be precisely defined on this knife edge of improbability. You have to see the hands of a creator who set the parameters to be just so because the creator was interested in something a little more complicated than random particles. How refreshing is it to read an acknowledgement that even some scientists have used fine-tuning and the anthropic principle as evidence of the existence of God in a context in which they are not derided, mocked, or labeled. Lightman then informs readers, intelligent design, however, is an answer to fine-tuning that does not appeal to most scientists. This observation is important because it, one, admits that the possibility that such fine-tuning does reflect an intelligent cause, and two, It acknowledges that while it's a possibility, it is a possibility that most scientists do not want to consider. It does not appeal to them, which shows a lack of objectivity when considering the issue. For years, ID proponents have been belittled as being irrational, anti-scientific, or lacking any evidence. But here is an open acknowledgement that ID proponents are considering a possible implication of the evidence and that that possible implication makes most scientists very uncomfortable. So if ID as a possible explanation is off the table, how can scientists deal with the fine-tuning of the universe? Lightman describes the explanation gaining popularity, that our universe is merely one of an infinite number of bubble universes, that there are countless different universes with different properties in which you will find an infinite range of circumstances and laws. Countless of these universes will feature no possibility of life at all, but others will permit the emergence of cells, plants, and animals, and minds. The explanation for why the universe is fine-tuned is simply because it's the only kind of universe that we could have evolved to observe. We couldn't exist in another kind of universe, so ours is the way it is, because it is the only kind where life forms like ourselves could ever observe it. This multiverse explanation of the fine-tuning conundrum is comforting to some scientists because it does not require the presence of a designer. 
Lightman quotes Nobel Prize winning physicist Steven Weinberg, Over many centuries, science has weakened the hold of religion, not by disproving the existence of God, but by invalidating arguments for God based on what we observe in the natural world. The multiverse idea offers an explanation of why we find ourselves in a universe favorable to life that does not rely on the benevolence of a creator, and so if correct, will leave still less support for religion. Clearly what many philosophers and scientists have observed in the natural world have reinforced the idea of God for many faithful, and that many see the intricate complexity of basic life forms, the data present on DNA coding, and see a signature of intelligence. But let's set that to the side for the moment. Lightman points out that some physicists remain skeptical of the anthropic principle and the reliance on multiple universes, while others have reluctantly accepted the anthropic principle and the multiverse idea as together providing the best possible explanation for the observed facts. Why is this theory that concludes our universe is what it is because we are here to observe it the best possible? Well, it's explained that string theory, eternal inflation theory, and the existence of dark matter energy have all supported the possibility of the multiverse theory. Plus, I can't help but think it's also considered best because it's not intelligent design. Remember, that's not a theory to be comfortable with. It's okay to consider an infinite number of bubble universes, but it's not okay to look for an intelligent design in the universe. Lightman points out that if this idea of the multiverse is correct, the historic mission of physics to explain all the properties of our universe in terms of fundamental principles, to explain why the properties of our universe must necessarily be what they are, is futile, a beautifully philosophical dream that simply isn't true. In other words, Lightman notes that because there is no way for us to prove the existence of infinite universes, not only must we accept that basic properties of our universe are accidental and uncalculable, we must believe in the existence of many other universes. But we have no conceivable way of observing these other universes and cannot prove their existence. Thus, to explain what we see in the world and in our mental deductions, we must believe in what we cannot prove. Lightman affirms that what this new theory demands of science is faith. But remember, the multiverse theory is still considered a better explanation and a more comforting one than intelligent design. The reasons for this don't seem at all clear. It's okay to explore that there is an infinite number of unobservable bubble universes, but it's not okay to search for an intelligent design to the universe. But take heart, somewhere out there in the infinite number of universes, there is one in which the reasons must be absolutely clear. It might make one uncomfortable, but if ID proponents are right, the answers are in this one. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast of ID the Future, a podcast of the Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture. Consider supporting the Center for Science and Culture by going to idthefuture.com and clicking the yellow donate button. This podcast is copyright 2012, the Discovery Institute. All rights reserved.